Okay, we're ready for step five. And in this section of the lesson, we're gonna be answering the question, why might a farmer choose a GM or genetically modified seed variety? So think back to the beginning of the lesson when you learned about the 10 crops that have a GM seed variety available. So if you are a farmer of those 10 crops, you could choose a genetically modified seed variety or not. Okay, so why would a farmer choose a GM seed if it's available to him or her. So to illustrate this question, I want to just show you an image. Uh, right here in the middle, I have the word successful crop. This is the goal that farmers have is providing a successful crop. Uh, a su successful crop looks like a grocery store full of healthy, nutritious food um, and a plentiful, plentiful supply of food. To reach that goal, there are two different roads that have to converge and come together. One is the farmer who provides the supply, and one is the consumer who provides the demand. So both of these roads come together to reach the ultimate goal of providing a successful crop. Along the way, it's not just a clear-cut path, there's often challenges, and I represented these challenges by rocks in the road. So just think of them as stumbling blocks or challenges things that have to be taken care of and overcome. And uh, so to illustrate that just a little bit more, here's some examples. So as a farmer is producing a crop, one thing that they have to overcome is plant disease. Just like people and animals, plants get diseases that can either make them sick and slow their growth and harvest or even kill the crop altogether. There are diseases, there are pests, which are harmful insects that can um, destroy a crop. There's also weeds that uh, this is any type of unwanted plant in a field that takes the nutrients in the water that are intended for the crop. Uh, drought or lack of water is a challenge and then another challenge is that farmers need to provide what consumers want. So here's just five examples of some of the challenges that are faced as a farmer um, tries to supply a successful, tries to create the supply that will lead to a successful crop. Let me give you a couple of examples. You learned about this at the beginning of the lesson, um, papayas that have been genetically modified. The reason a farmer might choose that is because the genetically modified version overcomes a specific disease that the papaya tree is susceptible to. So that's why a papaya farmer might choose a GM variety. Okay, how about a cotton farmer? Cotton is susceptible to a pest called a bollworm that can destroy the crop. So pests is a challenge that a cotton farmer faces and they might choose the tool of raising a genetically modified um, variety of the, the cotton crop. Okay, it would overcome the challenge of pests. Um, another example can be found in both corn and soybeans and this is to control weeds. Weeds, like I said, are uh, something that takes the nutrients and water that is needed to grow the crop and um, decreases the overall productivity of the field. So we want to get rid of weeds. And one way that they can do that is by growing a genetically modified a variety of soybean or corn seed that allows the farmer to spray the entire field with glyphosate, um, making it kill the weeds, but not the crop. So again, a tool that overcomes a challenge that farmers face in providing a supply of food, okay? So on the other side, on the consumer side, there's also different things that consumers want um, and challenges that are faced. One is spoilage. Most food has a shelf life and is only good for a certain amount of time and it has to make it from the farmer to the consumer. So we've got to consider spoilage uh, we've got to consider damage and shipping. Can we get the crop from the farm to the consumer before it's damaged? Um, convenience, a lot of consumers prefer convenience foods that are prepared and ready to eat. So that's something cost plays a factor in a consumer's choice or the demand that they create for food. Most people prefer cheaper food rather than more expensive food. The other thing that has to be considered is the flavor of the food. They want food that tastes the way they expect it to taste and that it tastes good. Okay, so these are all challenges that are faced. And remember, each of these challenges 
need to be addressed in order to come to the ultimate goal of having a successful crop here in the middle. So to go back to our original question, why might a farmer choose a genetically modified seed variety? The answer is to overcome a challenge that they are faced in providing the supply and meeting the demand of consumers for food. So perhaps it overcomes disease, perhaps it overcomes pests, perhaps it adds to the convenience or the flavor, that's a reason or a uh, culmination of reasons of why they might choose a genetically modified seed variety. Okay, let's move on to step six. In this step, we're gonna be considering perspectives. Genetically modified organisms or GMOs are a highly debated topic um, in food and farming and other social um, spaces. So we're going to be talking about considering other people's perspectives. So now that you have a pretty basic knowledge of what a GMO is, um, the 10 different crops in the United States that have a variety of um, seed available uh, for farmers to grow, and just some basic information, let's consider the different perspectives that people have. To do that, I want you to imagine that there is a beach ball in the middle of the room that you're in. On each section of the beach ball, there's a number, like you can see in the picture here. Now I want you to think about the four different people I have represented on the screen here, and the perspective or the view that they have of that ball sitting in the center of the room. The ball's not going to move and the people aren't going to move in this scenario. Okay, so this person in the bottom right hand corner can probably see the number two really well, and parts of the number three. The person in the top right corner can probably see number three and parts of four. The person in the top left can probably see uh, five and six. And the person in the bottom left can probably see one and, one and six. Okay, so each of these people, based on their experiences, based on where they're standing, can see all of one number and maybe parts of another based on their perspective um, or their point of view. Okay, so this person in the bottom right hand corner can't see what the person in the top left hand corner can see. Okay, so this is just a little object lesson um, that I want you to have in your mind as we continue talking about genetically modified organisms and people's perspective or their point of view on them. Remember that people's experiences are what help shape and form um, their thoughts and their perspective. It's based on what they see from their point of view. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, the next thing I'm going to introduce to you is that there are two different types of science that impact genetically modified organisms and the acceptance of them. Okay, so on the left we have biological science. This is the study of life, this is chemical processes, this is physiological mechanisms, this is the, the processes and the things that you've studied in your biology class. Uh, you've studied mitosis, you've studied photosynthesis, all of these things are biological science. The creation of genetically modified organisms is the result of biological science. The research and study of genetically modified organisms by the USDA, the EPA, and the FDA use biological science to determine that the genetically modified seeds that are available on the market today were safe for the environment, safe for consumers, etc. They use biological science to confirm that. So at this point, although genetic modification is biologically sound and safe, um, there's also another type of science that comes into play and it's called social science. Okay, social science is the study of human behavior, it's psychology, um, it's a search for an explanation for human behavior and it's perception. Okay, so thinking of people's acceptance or um, support, I guess, of genetically modified organisms has a lot to do with social science. So if people don't accept the science, then it's not really going to progress and move forward. Okay, so both of these things have to be in place um, 
kind of they, they impact one another. So let me give you an example and you're going to actually learn more about this in the next step. But this is a picture of something called golden rice. Golden rice was created several years ago. It's a genetically modified uh, variety of rice that contains extra beta carotene. In um, third world countries, uh, there are diseases that are related to nutrition and the ability that people have to obtain the nutrition from their food. So this golden rice was developed as a way to help them to gain the nutrition that they need because it has the beta carotene in it they need for their diet. So this is a really prime example, and you're going to learn more about this in the video that you're going to soon watch, but this is a really prime example of something that was a biological success. They were able to create the rice. Um, all of the genetics and all of the biology came through, but it was a social fail failure because the people feared it and rejected it. So golden rice is something just for your background knowledge. It's not something that's on the market and grown today. If you remember, it's not one of the 10 um, genetically modified uh, seed varieties that are available on the market today. It's just one that has been developed, but the science and the um, innovation has not been put to use to date. Okay, so at this point you're going to move on to the next step and learn a little bit more about um, golden rice.